read it again slow. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves. So to the thing that you give yourself to, if I'm gonna give myself to the lust of my body, I'm gonna be a slave to that. Because the first time I gave in, I felt uncomfortable. I know I felt uncomfortable because I kept it in the closet. I knew it was wrong to do, I didn't go with it. That's what you tell yourself when you go into these um, um, this gay pride parade. What I'm showing you is that every person walking down this path is reacting on the lust of their body. That's right. right. They're reacting on the philosophies of the society. They're not living the words of God. Right. There's a battle that happened within them, and they lost that battle. Bring it I'm going to show it to you. Read. The book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 5. Uh -huh. For a day that are after the flesh. After the what? After the flesh. After that lust in my body. Read. Do mind the things of the flesh. They say, you know what? It felt good, so I'ma do it again. Bring it out. It felt good, so guess what? I'ma do it again. You minding the things of the flesh. Like right. and, and you know what? I'm glad you said that, because most people that think, oh, they out here preaching hate, condemning. Guess what? The thief, he reminds the things of being a thief. The uh -huh. um, whoremonger goes after women to go after women to satisfy his lust. That's right. The liar kept lying till it Bring felt it good. Out and he forgot about changing, he stayed in that mindset. Right. So, my brothers and sisters, this homosexual lifestyle, I'm not condemning you. I'm letting you know that you can come back from that. That's That's right. Right. You don't have to be a slave to that. Read it again. Romans chapter eight, verse five. Uh -huh. For a day that are after the flesh, uh -huh. do mind the things of the flesh. Read. But they that are after the spirit. They that are after the spirit. What is the spirit? The true word of God. Right. right. If you after the spirit, I'm gonna think about what the spirit tells me to do. Right. What this, how the spirit tells me to live and act. That's what I'm gonna think of, read. But they that are after the spirit, uh -huh. the things of the spirit. Read. For to be carnally minded. To go after your flesh, to go after the pleasure. Because to be honest, you wasn't born in a situation where I naturally want to do this. You experimented. You experimented. You felt a little conscious at first. It made you feel uncomfortable. But guess what? Instead of saying, you know what, let me change, you kept going. So you were carnally minded. You were reacting off the lust of your flesh. For to be carnally minded is death. Is what? Is death. Uh huh. But to be spiritually minded uh -huh. is life and peace. You see that? To be spiritually minded, to resist my lust, to stay away from what I think makes me feel good, is life and peace. Because what happens when you give in? Every single person that finds themselves promoting this gay pride parade, you have lost the internal battle that we all face. Right. Give me, give me one more point I'm going to bring out. Give me uh, Revelation, I mean, no, Romans 7, verse... Verse 19, read that. This is the battle that happened in every single person. Whether you're a liar, whether you um, abuse your wife, whether you're a homosexual, whether you're a thief. This is the battle that starts off inside of you and you got a choice whether to win or give in. Read. The book of Romans chapter seven, verse 19. Uh -huh. For the good that I would, as you were, for the good that I, that I would, I do not. Read it again slow. This is the battle in every single person that wants to live the words of God. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you have to face this battle within yourself. Read it again slow. For the good that I would I do not. The good you know you're supposed to do, you don't do it. People, we gave in. We gave in to that flesh. We gave in to our bodies because we didn't have the word of God to show us the right way. That's right. Watch this. Give me chapter 6, verse 16. What happens when the, when the man gives in to that flesh, to that lust inside of him? What happens to the woman when she gives in to that flesh and that lust inside of her? I'm going to show you. Read. The book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 16. Uh -huh. know, know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey. His servants, ye are to whom ye obey. Read it again slow. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves. So to the thing that you give yourself to, if I'm going to give myself to the lust of my body, I'm going to be a slave to that. That's right. 
Because the first time I gave in, I felt uncomfortable. I know I felt uncomfortable because I kept it in the closet. I knew it was wrong to do, I didn't go with it. Right. That's what you tell yourself when you go into these, this gay pride parade. I'm the black, Hispanic, and Native American man, what happened was when you started touching that sin, you gave yourself into it and you became a slave to it. Read it again. No, ye know, as you were, know ye not uh -huh. that to whom ye yield yourselves, uh -huh. servants to obey, uh -huh. his servants ye are to whom ye obey. So you became a slave to that fleshly lust. You, came, you became a slave, a slave to that sin. You understand what I'm saying, sis? Sis, don't, 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 you get what I'm saying as far as the flesh, we give it. What happens is people give in to that lust of it. And then you find yourself departing away from the laws of God. Give me Psalms 119, 133. So, How long will you be here? I gotta go drop this off, but, 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 but this is what I, because I don't know if anybody brought that out to you. Now, we could, we could talk about the sin that's in front of us as far as sodomy and homosexuality, right? But you, you, as a sister that has some type of understanding, what are you required to do? They, did they go over your dress code as a woman? Yeah. What was it? The dress and my natural state. Okay, give me that. Pull that script. Because I want to make sure that's in your spirit. And then we're going to go back to what's happening right now that people that are reacting and falling enslaved to the lust of their body. We're going to get back to that because that's where it's at. Give me um, Deuteronomy 22 and 5. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. The scripture said that the woman has an obligation not to wear that which pertains to a man. What is that talking about, sis? Do you know? Pants. Bridal. We're made to We're made to Right, right. But my point is, when a woman, notice, when women wear pants, what happens? It's tight. When women wear shorts, it's tight. Something happens. When a woman puts on the garment that pertains to a man, it shows her body. It shows the curves of her body. Okay, well what does that do to the man? Let me see if you're thinking. If a woman shows off her body, the sexuality of her body, what does that do to the man? You got it. You got it. Give me Toby um, um, 8 and 7. You got it. Hold that um, um, song. So, a woman has an obligation to put on things that are modest apparel because that helps the... Right, right. That helps. Guess what? That helps a man do. It helps him fight his flesh. That lust that he would have for that woman, I ain't gonna have it like that. I can't see her curve. I got to know who she is. That's exactly what the scriptures say we need to do. You understand what I'm saying? But I just want you to know your role. So, if you're not supposed to wear pants, what should the woman wear? Tobas 8 and 7. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So, now, my question to you again, if you're not supposed to wear tight pants and pants in general and shorts, what should you wear? A dress, a dress, right, because it represents um, uh, um, royalty. Right, right now, that, that's a great question, because some women will be like, well, I'm wearing a skirt right here that shows off my thighs. I'm wearing a skirt, when I sit down, I gotta pull it down every three seconds. Is that really modest? No. Nah. Is that gonna stop the man from lusting after you? Nah. And you know what happens? I'm gonna show you the chain reaction. Uh -huh. The man, you know what? It's a butterfly Drop effect. all that. It is all right. Give me um, Exodus 22, verse 16. Because what happens is, once that man starts to lust after you, right? Is he looking at you as, I wonder what kind of mother she's gonna be? I wonder what kind of um, wife she's going to be. Is he thinking about that? Nah. You know what he's thinking about? I wonder how. There you go. How fast I could get it and get out the situation. How fast I could get it and get out the situation. And you got to understand, America's wicked as hell. I'm going to show you something. The same America that will support that, right, is the same America that will support rap music videos with our sisters wearing skimpy attires. The same America that will support the kings of this earth going into prison. The same, you, you, don't, you don't see the, the, the contradiction. Be yourself. This is a safe place. But the people that got abused over and over and over again, you never gave them reparations. You never changed laws to help protect them. Right. You a contradicting, hypocrite, lying nation. Right, right. So now let's get back to that lust. What does that lust do when the woman dressed immodestly? Give me, 
22, verse 16. Uh, yeah. I'm acknowledging The book of Exodus, chapter 22, verse 16. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And if a man entice a maid. You heard what the scripture just said? It said, if a man entice a maid. Do you know what entice means? What is that? Right? Drawn in. It, let, let's keep it like regular words. What would that mean? He spit game at you. Oh, you know, we come on, we family here. So when a man spits game or you know tries to finesse a woman, that's what that's talking about, right? Read. And if a man entices a maid, uh -huh. that is not betrothed. That is not what? And that is not betrothed. So she's not married. She's not engaged. She's not promised to anyone. Read. And lie with her. Uh huh. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. The scriptures say he shall surely 100% guarantee you got. Now, my question to you is, does the, is that enforced in America? With none of y'all out here. None, America none, or none, like my America? America? No, no, we talking Not about America. this America. No. Exactly. No. Have fun, live it up, no. one life to live. You see what I'm saying? And guess what community is affected the most by that? You got it, sis. No husbands in the house. No women where a, you, the, the children don't have no focus. They not built up. That's it. See, sis, you got the wisdom. But see, now that's one thing to know it. I just want you to be, there you go. So, you wearing those shorts, I get that. But that right there ain't going to help our nation. Right. And that's what I really need though, the fellowship of my soul, because I'm a college student, I'm only 20. Right. So I'm in the Okay, I'm watch this, the watch right this. Now. Give me Titus 2. Give me Titus 2, so you got that point. If a man spits game to a woman, he lusts after her, he's supposed to, what? Marry her. Right. But this society right. says, no man, just have fun, keep it moving. Right. You said some key just now, I want the fellowship. I'm going to show you that the scriptures say you're supposed to do that. Titus 2, let the age woman, let the age woman. Uh, three. Yeah. Titus chapter two verse three. Sis, you know? sis, this for you. Sis, don't worry about now. Sis, don't worry about that. You being edified. You understand the implications of dressing immodestly creates lust in our men. It creates. Um, it breaks down the family. You got that right? Now, the fellowship for the young sister like you that wants to get on track, that wants to apply the scriptures. Listen to what it says. Titus chapter 2 verse 3. Uh -huh. The aged woman likewise. The aged woman is that spiritual sister that made the same choice you want to make today. I want to change. I want to live the words of God. So the aged sister's been doing it a little longer. She's gone through her ups and downs. You got that? Read it again from the top. The aged woman likewise. Uh -huh. That they be in behavior as becoming holiness, uh -huh. not false accusers, uh -huh. not given too much wine. The only way you can truly get right is you gotta come in fellowship with the body. That's right. You gotta look at that flyer, look at the um the, the address, the website, and say, you know what? Let me go learn from the eight sisters on how I'm supposed to conduct myself as a righteous daughter of Sarah. Right. A righteous princess of God. Right. You understand what I'm saying, sis? That's the biggest, biggest, biggest challenge that we have. Now, the next thing we need to go over is um, what does what what is the role of the woman as far as the marriage? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, right. Because women don't know the talk same to way me, talk that to you me. guys are made right. to labor all the way back from Adam and Eve. Uh -huh. We are here to tend this land because this is ours. Let me ask you a question. In this society, what what do they say the woman's role is in the marriage? What do they say the woman's role is? You mean Sirach 26? I, there's so many different things. I don't fact, know. Household, uh -huh. maybe I don't know. I so I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. What was the what? What does America push as the role of the woman in the marriage? Housewives-ish, maybe. A America I was, pushes I was, that. I was raised differently. I really don't know what they. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So have you ever heard that? You know what? A woman is 50-50 with a with a husband. You heard that before? Oh yeah, I don't agree. Right, 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 right. Because we read that scripture before, right? So what I want you to read is, give me that. Sir Rock, chapter 26, verse 2. Uh -huh. A virtuous woman rejoices her husband. What does a virtuous woman do? Rejoices her husband. Do you know how important it is for a virtuous woman to rejoice her husband? Because guess what? When he comes home and he see, man, this wife, she loves me. She takes care of me. You know what? I'm going to go above and beyond for my virtuous wife. That's right. The same way the man finds the good thing, he who finds the wife finds the good thing. There you go. Because she's that wife. Because she's this wife. The, should she come home and start arguing his head off? Why the bills ain't paid? Well, you know what? What you watch husband, he make this amount of money. You understand what I'm if saying? If people go back though and truly live that way, there's 
no need for arguments. You know why? Because we'll budget and we'll understand how to work our finances. Right. There won't be that type of little. So we got that. A virtuous wife rejoices her husband. Right? Yep. Read verse 13. Verse 13. The grace of a wife delighted her husband. Read it again. The grace of a wife delighted her husband. See, the woman is it's her duty to help make sure that man is happy. That man is built up so he can do the work of the Lord. Right. You understand? But when we look at this, this is telling you to reject every order of God. I don't want a husband and a wife in the house. I want two men in the house. Right. I don't want a husband and a wife in the house. I want two women in the house. Teach and guess God. what? That's totally contradiction to what? The order of God. Because can they make kids? Teach God. They can't make kids. Yeah, Alright, I understand, Sid, but Sid, do you have any questions before you go? Did I go too fast? No, so you I'm understand what I'm saying? Right back. Okay, cool. We're gonna be here. We're gonna be here. We're gonna be here. But understand your role, sister. Get out those shorts. You need to be in the dress, sis, okay? Hey, you gotta hey, that's what it's about. So we are out here for the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans to let you know that you are the children of Israel according to the Bible. That's right. This is not ordained of the Lord. Right. This right here is not in the Bible. Men laying with men is not okay according to the Bible. But you know what? I'm going to show you something. What we've done, we've embraced the philosophies of America and said, you know what? If it's okay in America to do, I'm going to do that. Give me Wisdom of Solid 3 verse 10. So I'm going to talk about some facts that nobody wants to talk about. Fact one, the so-called lesbian relationship is filled with substance abuse. Right, right. The so-called gay relationship is filled with domestic violence. That's right. The so-called homosexuality relationship is filled with depression. That's right. I'm going to call it straight. You look forward to this pride event because you want one day where you can feel happy or so-called happy. But guess what? You will not find happiness in sin. Because the Most High will judge that. Why is the so-called homosexual relationship filled with misery and hurt and pain? Because it's going contrary to the words of God. That's right. Read that. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 10. Uh -huh. But the ungodly shall be punished uh -huh. according to their own imagination. According to what? Their own imagination. You know what's the biggest imagination? To say that two men can create life. That is an imagination. That is totally contrary to the words of God. Do I say this to make you feel bad? Do I say this to condemn you? No, I say this to win you over back to your heavenly father. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American, this is for you. You have gone over to your own imagination. What happened as a result of that? Read on. Which have neglected the righteous and forsaken the Lord. You have forsaken God. Read on. For who, whoso despises wisdom and nurture, he is miserable. Read that part again. For whoso despises wisdom and nurture, he is miserable. He is miserable. Except the fact that the homosexual relationship you are chosen. That's you right. are chosen special people. That's, right. That's why you find no happiness after this. Guess what? I'm going to be honest with you. You are going to do this pride parade. And you're going to go back home and be like, I'm miserable again. I'm not happy. I got one day to dress as flamboyant as I want to. But guess what? It didn't make me happy. It didn't give me happiness. Why? Because you are going contrary to the words of God. Read. Their hope is vain. Uh -huh. Their labor unfruitful. Uh -huh. And their works unprofitable. Their works are unprofitable. I don't care how many parade after parade you do, you will never find that true happiness you're looking for. Because this is sin. Give me 1 Peter 2 verse 11. Bring it on. 1 Peter 2 verse 11. So what's happening? What's happening? You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, what's happening inside of you that makes you say, you know what? I'm gonna lay with the same sex to find pleasure. I'm gonna lay with the same sex to find peace. What's happening inside of you? There's a battle inside of you. Read that. First Peter, chapter two, verse 11. Uh -huh. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. As what? 
as strangers and pilgrims. You know why it says as strangers and pilgrims? The so-called black man was brought here on slave ships. Right. You wasn't brought over here to be friends. Right. You wasn't brought over here to be built up. Right. You was brought over here to be slaves. The so-called Hispanic, you were conquered by the conquistador. Right. You were forced, you were forced to be slaves. Right. So it says as strangers and pilgrims because this is not your rest. Right. This is not the end of you. This is not where you're supposed to relax. You're supposed to be looking for your heavenly father to come back so you can escape this evil. Right. So it says as strangers and pilgrims, read. Abstain from fleshly lust. No, give in to it. Abstain from fleshly lust. The word of God says you gotta resist that fleshly lust on your body. You gotta resist that thing. You gotta stay away from it. Because guess what? It's doing something inside of you, read on. Which war against the soul? What does that lust inside of me do? Which war against the soul? You don't understand that you are fighting for your very souls. And the only way you can fight that directly is using the words of God. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.